Good afternoon. It is Friday, May 3rd, 2013. This is Jason Horak reporting on the Dodge Daytona electric vehicle and the ongoing adventures thereof. So what we've got going on here today is temperature sensing. Um, one of the important things that I've run into with the car is that I don't have any accurate way to measure the temperature of the motor. And since I smoked at least one motor due to overheating and possibly the other one, um, I think it's very important that I figure this issue out and uh, <laughs> have been thus babying my car and uh, babying the motor because I'm worried about it overheating and not knowing any better. So anyway, in order to actually do the, some serious testing with the car and push it to its limits, I'm going to need to know what the temperature of that motor is, um, or at least have a pretty good approximation of what's going on so that I can pull over and give it a break if it needs it. Um, so anyway, what I'm look, working on here is trying to make the original um, engine coolant sensor uh, work with the Soliton 1 and the electric car. And specifically what that is, is there's this little sensor here. Um, that screws in to the front of the gasoline engine um, where the coolant or the uh, antifreeze goes through it next to the thermostat. Um, and what this, the function that this actually performs in the original car is that it drives, uh, it's connected to the engine computer and affects things like the timing and um, you know, the fuel flow and all that kind of stuff based on how cold or hot the, the engine gets. Um, so anyway, that's the sensor. And uh, basically it's just a th thermistor, is what my research has, uh, has shown. Um, it has two leads, a positive and a ne negative, or positive and ground, depending on how you look at it. And uh, it's pretty straightforward. What I've done for my little test here is this white wire is hooked up to a multimeter in temperature sensing mode. Um, so what this is showing us is that we're at 78 degrees ambient temperature, which is pretty much off by about 10 degrees, but whatever, it's, it'll give us a relative uh, idea. Um, and I just have that kind of tied with a little like bread tie type of a thing up here right next to the back end of the sensor. So it's not touching, but it's very close and should give us a pretty accurate reading of what that metal um, has been heated up to or cooled to. And uh, as far as the other wiring, the negative terminal on this little uh, just car, regular car battery is use these little leads to connect it. Um, and so that goes up to here into the negative of the, the sensor and then the positive lead goes out here and as you can see I've got it running through a resistor. This was the big discovery. Um, I had attempted this whole test yesterday without a resistor and it didn't work so well. Uh, I, I got pretty much no, no reading and it was terrible. <laughs> but uh, so it just goes, so the positive goes through this resistor and up to the positive lead. So that's it. Um, that resistor is a 100,000 ohm resistor, I believe. Or 100K, as they call it. Um, and as you can see, I have my multimeter, my handy dandy little multimeter here, uh, hooked up with just the positive on this side of the resistor and the negative on this side. So it's a very simple setup. Um, and <laughs> What it's showing me right now is 1.256 volts. Um, so for whatever that's worth, that's what it shows when the temperature is 78 degrees or you know, more like 76 really in here, I guess. Um, so anyway, but regardless, 78 on, on that one, 1.256 on that. Um, so what we're gonna do, is first to try cooling this with our magic frozen vegetables. So I'm just going to put that on there, bury under this, the metal part of the sensor, uh, leaving the thermistor kind of hanging, or the or the temperature probe rather, just kind of hanging out on the side there. 
and we're going to kind of see what happens. Um, so our temperature is dropping. We're at 76 degrees now reading on this device. And you can see that the voltage is also starting to drop. Now it's not a huge huge drop. I mean it's, it's going down fairly slowly. Um, but it's giving us a, a change in voltage, which is the key that I was looking for here. Um, theoretically, if I hook up just a gauge to that, you know, a little 12-volt uh, gauge uh, to those same leads, there and there, I should be able to get a reading of 0 to 12 volts, and it will fluctuate based on the temperature coming out of this sensor. Um, so that's, that's the theory anyway. <laughs> so as you can see with the uh, steam fresh vegetables on there, uh, we have dropped a few degrees in temperature and the voltage is decreasing by a few uh, 100 millivolts. Um, so anyway, there we go. So and that will continue to go down. Um, I haven't really taken it all the way to freezing or, or anything yet, but um, theoretically it would be at zero volts or maybe one volt. I'm not sure uh, how that all works. <laughs> so someone who's got like an electrical engineering degree might be able to tell me what uh, <laughs> a 100k resistance, uh, uh, yeah, 100k ohm resistor uh, will give us on a 12 volt battery. Um, when <laughs> this little guy is at freezing. Um, but anyway, we're not really concerned with the cold so much because the, end, the motor in the car doesn't care if it's cold. Uh, it can be negative whatever out and the motor will work just fine. Um, heat is, of course, the enemy. So again, we're just going to run this a little bit further. So we're at 73 degrees and 1.150. So we'll call it there. All right, so now we're just going to take our vegetables off. And I'm just going to put my hand on here and warm it up to roughly body temperature. So as you can see, it's there's something I'm touching the uh, temperature sensor as well. But there we go. So as you can see, the voltage is coming up fairly briskly. Um, you know, 1.23 and the rising. Um, and so basically, we don't have very much precision on the multimeter with the uh, the temperature probe here. Uh, so it's showing 80 degrees, even though we can see that we're getting quite a bit of an increase in voltage. Um, you know, quite a bit being relative. It's 1.3 volts instead of 1.1, but um, yeah. So anyway, that's that's coming up. Uh, so the I'm warming up the entire metal um, of the sensor uh, itself. So it's theoretically eventually going to get to body temperature uh, with me holding it like so. Um, but you know, again, body temperature is not really that big of a deal when it comes to an electric motor. Um, so what we're going to do is go wild and crazy and turn on my uh, my stove. So we've got the electric stove set to high now uh, for this burner. And we're just kind of resting on there. And I'm going to make sure that this little temperature thing is yeah, not touching. It's got a little bit of an air gap between the end of the probe. I know it's not coming out real well on the camera, but yeah. So this will probably take a few minutes for the um, stove top just to heat up. Um, you can kind of feel it's... Oh, I mean, there, there's a fair amount of warmth coming off of that. Um, so we can actually watch what's going on here. And so we're, we're still showing 80 degrees on our... on this meter. Um, but we are continuing to rise on the voltage as that temperature slowly creeps up. And, uh, yeah, so proof of concept, this does seem to be working. Uh, I'm not sure what kind of precision the soliton can do um, as far as whether it's three decimal places or two or even just the, the one. Um, 
but really the exact temperature doesn't matter so much. It's mostly um, you know that I need to take a reference temperature and say, okay, at 120 degrees Fahrenheit, this is what the voltage is, or whatever, and then I can tell roughly how hot or cold the the motor is um, from the soliton settings, like the soliton inputs um, coming across the data logger. And so basically, the whole plan here is. I'll be able to set up a gauge in my computer program or uh, possibly on the smartphone that will show the temperature of the motor and do all the math for us and so forth. So we'll actually get a Fahrenheit or Celsius reading um, based on this voltage uh, coming in from the sensor. I'm trying to go for you know real simple uh, setup here. Uh, so again, we have a single resistor the stock temperature sensor and a 12 volt power source and that's it that's uh, all we're going for uh, in the case of the car the 12 volt power source is actually going to be the soliton um, because it has a 12 volt out uh, and a ground uh, sig signal ground uh, that is used for all this fun stuff and uh, yeah so we should be able to get that to work um, and get a uh, solid uh, temperature reading on the soliton. Now I can experiment with different resistor sizes and just to see if there's um, you know something that can give us a better indication of you know, a better range in the voltage. Um, I'm just not sure <laughs> what kind of temperatures we're dealing with um, in terms of how it shows up as the voltage because um, the, the, the motor is rated um, I'm tr trying to think. The snap switch is 300, like 302 degrees Fahrenheit or something, 150 C, and that's when the, the internal switch in it will kick off and you know warn you that it's overheating, uh, that you need to need to do something about that. Obviously, I don't think the motor should get anywhere near 300 degrees Fahrenheit, um, but you know we'll. Do some tests, find out, you know, ex exactly you know, whatever the heat is that I can put out of my uh, my stove here, and uh, we'll kind of measure that and have a, sort of a baseline, um, and then I'll get this all installed in the car, and we'll do some test drives and just see what voltage it gets up to. Um, you know, again, we're not, we don't know how much temperature that really is, other than putting a temperature probe on the motor at the time and kind of comparing, um, but it should give us. A rough idea just by looking at the Soliton data logger at this point um, and seeing what that input value is set to. Uh, so anyway, as you can see we're at almost 100 degrees uh, temperature wise and we've gained up to you know 3.1 or 3.2 now uh, volts and it's going up fairly briskly and, and, and part of that I'm guessing is the uh, the metal of the sensor itself, as that heats up, you know, it kind of dissipates and spreads around it and so forth. And so it's taking a little longer for the sensor metal to heat up than it does just for the burner. Um, but uh, but yeah, so 102 degrees and 3.6 volts, 7. So as long as we don't exceed the temperature. Um, rating of the sensor, which again, this is designed to be run in a gas car, so I'm guessing it gets pretty darn hot under the, or physically screwed into the engine. Um, but, um, but yeah, I see my, my gauge has switched over to uh, two digits, and then a two digit display at, at four volts. Um, but you know it's it's going up fairly briskly. We should be able to measure that pretty accurately on the soliton, um, and this is only at 105 degrees uh, Fahrenheit. So I'm hoping that we'll have enough range uh, to give us a really good approximation um, from room temperature to too damn hot, <laughs> and uh, you know just be able to use this stock gauge to do the job. So. Anyway, I'm not going to bore you guys for another 14 minutes uh, watching this thing go up, but uh, I will probably leave this on for a little while and see where 
uh, the temperature levels out I'm just you know, from my burner on high here. Okay, so our happy little test setup here has been chugging along for about 15 to 20 minutes. And uh, we still have the burner on high, as well as everything hooked up exactly as it was before. Um, and so as you can see, we are at 183 uh, degrees Fahrenheit, 184, and 9.88 volts. And still climbing slightly. It is going up more slowly now. Um, I think we've kind of hit the <laughs> we're starting to hit the uh, capacity of my stove of how hot it can get. Um, and one thing to keep in mind that's kind of important on this temperature measurement is that again we're not touching the metal there. It's a little bit off, and it's kind of behind and underneath so that it's not directly under, over the burner. Um, so that means that the tip of this thing is probably quite a bit hotter than what we're measuring. Um, so all things being equal, uh, I think we're in pretty good shape. So there it is, just over 10 volts. And uh, yeah, now it's showing, it's dropped down to 164 on this little um, temperature meter. And the end of this thing is literally being cooked on the stove, so I'm guessing it again is quite a bit hotter than um, what our sensor is picking up, but or what our multimeter is picking up. But anyway, it's still within the range of where I wanted it to be, and uh, I think this is a good kind of a proof that this will work in the car um, to give me some indication of what's going on for the motor temperature. Um, and so what we're going to do now is actually power this off, so no, no more uh, stove, and then we're just going to slide this off to the side um, to let it cool down more rapidly. And then we can kind of observe what happens with the voltage, and uh, it'll take a minute for the, the just the metal of that sensor to dissipate some of the heat. Um, but as you can see, we're already getting voltage dropping here, uh, as well as the temperature on our probe. And there it goes. So um, there's still quite a bit of residual heat uh, on the stove uh, around the burner area. And so I'm sure we could cool it down much more rapidly with dousing it in some water or something, but that would probably cause all kinds of problems. Uh, maybe hurt my sensor, I don't know. Um, but yeah, as you can see, it's dropping down. Um, more or less corresponding to the temperature uh, within the limits of the accuracy of this thing anyway. It's kind of jumping all over, but you get the idea. Um, so anyway, that's the test for today. We're going to uh, get this all wired up in the car, and I'm gonna have to do some routing of cables and so forth to make it make it work out. But um, yeah, I'll get this set up for the installation in the car, and we'll continue from there. Okay, just a follow-up to the earlier video. Uh, right now, we're underneath the car and uh, got it up on the on the ramps, and I've got the laptop hooked up uh, over the wireless router um, to connect to the soliton and I've got the wiring all set here for our little temperature sensor and I kind of changed things a little bit in the circuit uh, just did some experimentation and as you can see we've got the positive is just wired straight through now um, and that's hooked to the 12 volt positive coming out of the soliton and the black wire here is the negative. Again, this is the signal ground coming out of the soliton. And the, the uh, yellow cable is plugged into input 3. Um, and so that's just connected. Not sure how the lighting is going to work out here, but uh, so this is our little resistor. And so the negative comes in here, and the signal goes up there, and then this is the negative lead uh, on the actual sensor. So that is the wiring actually in the car. Um, again, just to kind of test, see how this is going to work. 
And so what I've got is on the laptop, we'll see how, how the lighting does out here in the out, out of doors. But if I run the Soliton data logger, it connects and it's getting information from the controller. And if we open the little logger text file, we can see that for input number three, we have 131 volts, or sorry, 1.31 volts, rather. And then if I actually do the old hand on the sensor trick um, to warm it up here a bit, then we will see what it comes up with um, as far as the voltage goes. And I did, I did this test a little bit earlier so that I know that it all works, but um, basically, um, We'll heat it up there as much as we can with my hand just a little bit and okay so now the soliton logger doesn't show us real-time data for that um, but we can pull up the log file and again showing that it started out at 1.31 as I put my hand on it we increased 1.35, 3.8, 4.0 and 4.1 and up to 1.42 at the, at the bottom so it does work, we get a reading, and it uh, you know, seems to be a happening thing. So I just wanted to show you the uh, <laughs> kind of interim step here of just making sure that the proof of concept actually works. And um, yeah, so there we go. And we're going to go ahead and get these wires all tidied up so that they can uh, be in here uh, on a more permanent basis. Uh, as far as the actual mounting of the device, um, of the sensor, I don't really have a good spot to uh, to put this on the motor, um, so I'm going to do some probably zip tie magic uh, just to get it to press up against the casing as close to the commutator end as I can, and uh, you know just to see what we get for a reading. Um, so it won't necessarily be precise, um, but we're just going for a, a general indicator, and as long as the metal of this is touching the motor, we should get some kind of reading. Uh, but anyway, I'll go ahead and uh, get that all tidied up and be right back. Okay, well, we're back. Um, I ended up running out of the daylight a couple days ago when I was first working on this project, um, so I wasn't able to get it completely mounted in the car, um, but I got the wiring all tidied up and the actual installation completed. Um, so I just wanted to show everyone where we're at at this point and uh, kind of go over uh, just a few basics and uh, we'll go from there. So basically what we've got here is the low voltage wiring for the Saliton. On the right hand side, the last terminal there is the ground, that is the um, sensor ground. And then the second one in is the sensor 12 volt signal. And so that's the, you know, kind of output. And then a couple of them over is input number one. That's the green wire. Um, and then the next one over is the tachometer, uh, which is kind of in behind these other wires. I'm hard to see, but you kind of get the idea. Um, so the tach is still hooked up. Uh, so the tach actually shares the uh, signal ground and the signal 12 volt, uh, just like the... Uh, temperature sensor does now. Uh, so anyway, that wiring uh, goes down and is routed up through uh, the front of the car there and then down to the motor right there. And so that is actually the... Let's see if I can get in there without shaking the camera around it too badly. Sorry about that. So anyway, that's the sensor now mounted actually touching uh, the net gain warp 9 motor um, up at the end where the commutator is. Um, so now we're at the bottom of the motor here because there really wasn't a good spot. I tried to fit it up there but then it was going to hit the battery box and the terminal was in the way and all kinds of other issues so I ended up putting it down here where it's very easily accessible um, for both installing it as well as you know plugging it in and doing testing. Also I can put a temperature probe um, up here against the motor at the same point very easily, or relatively easily, 
um, by crawling under the car uh, even when it's not up on the uh, on the ramps. So anyway, I chose this spot, and that's where we're going to go for the temperature reading. Again, it doesn't really matter um, other than the fact that we're touching the motor and we're going to get a voltage reading that we can determine if it's, uh, <laughs> you know, what is a good reading and what is a bad reading, uh, you know, if it's too hot or, or not. Um, so anyway, this, uh, so this other wire loom here is what goes to the um, RPM gauge, RPM sensor, which is right there. Um, so... Uh, anyway, that's uh, that's the actual physical installation of the thing, um, and then now what we've got here is hooked up once again on our laptop. Take a look to see where we're at, and we will use the data logger. Just let it run for a few seconds, okay, and then we'll pull up the, the log. And so we're showing. Our input number one is the one I moved it to. I was using input number three during testing, but I think number one makes more sense now. Uh, so anyway, it's 1.22 volts. And our temperature today, according to the best reader I've got, which is this little uh, multimeter. Um, so we're showing about 70 degrees, 70, 71 uh, ambient, and when we go up and touch the probe here to the motor at that point, we're also at 70 degrees, so um, that also corresponds to roughly uh, what the weather service uh, site is saying, is that we're 74 in the sun, and uh, at 3.59 p.m. in the afternoon. Again, today is Sunday the 5th. Um, so, anyway, so that's where we're at right now. Um, so now I have the ability to log changes in voltage on this input pin from within the car uh, as we drive. So what we're going to do now is actually go out and uh, take the car for a little spin, get the motor warmed up, and then take a me measurement. So and give that a shot and I'll be right back. Okay, just uh, a couple things before we get going. I wanted to note the current mileage that the car is at. So we're at 167,057 and it's about 4.03 p.m. and uh, we're at 199.7 volts and I reset this to um, just a minute ago Basically zeroing it out. Let's go ahead and zero it out again. Okay. So everything's all set to zeros. And they're at 199.6, 199.7, somewhere in there. Um, and we're ready to go. Uh, what I also wanted to do uh, was just kind of go over the soliton settings just real quick um, that we've been using ever since I installed this motor. This is the rebuilt Netgain motor, uh, Warp 9. And uh, so anyway, I just will quickly whip through these. So minimum battery voltage at no current is at 150 volts. That equates to 2.5 volts per cell on average. Um, minimum battery voltage at full current is 120, which equates to 2 volts per cell, again, on average. Um, maximum battery current is 500. That is one half of what the soliton is capable of. Uh, the maximum motor voltage is set to 170, which is the net gain uh, specification for uh, the maximum amount of voltage it should be getting. Uh, Jack Rickard mentioned that uh, he runs his at about 190 or so, um, and so I might be cranking that up at some point, uh, now that I'm pretty sure that these brushes are as seated as they're ever going to get. Um, but anyway, um, that'll be a future test. Um, so maximum motor current is set to 500, again one half of what the uh, Celaton 1 is capable of, and then the maximum motor power is set to 100 kilowatts. Um, and again that's just kind of an arbitrary figure um, to kind of give us a sanity check so things don't get out of control. Uh, slew rate is set to the factory default of 500. 
So anyway, that is the solid home settings, and we are ready to go for a little test drive. Um, once again, our starting voltage on our temperature probe is, is now 1.23 uh, volts. So, and I guess we'll go ahead and uh, just reset that right now. Okay. And this is showing the pack voltage at 201. Um, with no RPM, obviously, and so forth. So, anyway, all right, so we got that ready to go. So, laptop is logging. Everything is good, and we're ready to <laughs> go make some history. Okay. okay. Right now we're up on the ramps, so we gotta drop down off the ramps here a little bit. There we go. Back on out of my driveway. Always somewhat of an adventure holding the camera. First gear. And one. Well. Alright, so what we're going to do is actually um, just for this first test, I'm just going to drive. Um, up on 81, uh, up on the highway there, uh, just for a quick run from Homer to Cortland. Just kind of what I've done before uh, for several testing type things. Um, and uh, we'll go from there and find out where we're at as far as the temperature on the motor uh, when we get back. So I'll be back in a little bit. All right, so here we are cruising along on the highway. 75 miles an hour. And I'm gonna push it here like I normally do on the exit ramp. We go in 90. And it can go faster, but we'll just be, good, be cool today. And so this is kind of the normal uh, run, just for a quick of what's going on with the uh, with the car and making sure everything's working well and so forth. Um, but it is kind of a just a good example of the average daily driving that I do um, as far as getting up on the highway and you know accelerating up to keep up with traffic and passing people and so forth. Um, so anyway, uh, this will be a good temperature test as well. And, uh, we'll take it on back to the house and throw the temperature probe on it and see where we're at. Um, it'll be good to compare what the reading is at that particular time and uh, also over the course of this little test, um, being as the ambient temperature is about 70 to 74 degrees and um, it's just a good example. So uh, anyway, we'll be back once we get to the back to the house. Okay, so after our br brisk run up on the highway, we're at now at 96 degrees. And again, that's measured right at where the uh, temperature probe is, or the temperature sensor. And over here on the computer, according to the Celeton data logger, we're at 1.97 volts. So anyway, 96 degrees, 1.97 volts, not too bad. Um, so that, anyway, that's not very hot at all. And uh, again, I mentioned before that when I would take a run like this, I could just put my hand on the motor. It's so not hot. Um, so I think we're in pretty good shape uh, temperature-wise for that shorter run. And uh, now we just need to kind of do a longer test run to see how much heat buildup uh, is in the motor over time. Um, so again, this gives us a good baseline that uh, roughly 97 degrees is 1.97 volts, uh, whereas 70 degrees was 1.22 volts. Uh, so anyway, more testing will continue. And uh, as we're just sitting here in the sun, warmed up just a little bit, we're at 97 degrees, 98. Um, but uh, really, it's not that hot, and uh, that's pretty good. So we'll be doing some more testing. Uh, I'm going to take it up on the highway and probably do a, 
a good half an hour drive or something just to really uh, see what's going on. Uh, of course, I'll log everything on the Soliton data logger and uh, then we'll analyze some of the data later and try to come up with an idea of roughly how hot it got uh, during that run. Uh, so anyway, thanks for watching and uh, I'll catch everybody later. Thanks. Have a good day.